Alkalinizing the urine. What, when, and how. Hello, welcome back to Reno Tutorials. Today we're going to be unpacking the when and how of alkalinizing urine in patients with kidney stones. It's going to be so much fun. When it comes to learning about the management of kidney stones, it can feel complicated because it's so entangled with tubular physiology and urine chemistry. And let's be honest, this is something that most of us try to avoid. Even in my own learning about stones, I ended up creating two other tutorials, Tubule School and RTA Understood at Last, because I needed to lay the foundation on those topics in my own mind before I could even begin to teach stones. And so today I wanted to give you a shortcut when it comes to stones, and that's understanding urinary alkalinization. In this short tutorial, we're going to learn when and how to alkalinize the urine. And the good news is that this is really easy. Okay, so the first thing to acknowledge is that there are different types of kidney stone, which are influenced differently by urine chemistry. By far the most common stone is calcium oxalate, and less commonly you'll see calcium phosphate and uric acid stones. We're going to leave the very small print rare stones for another day and focus on these three types of stones that you're more likely to see in your clinical practice. Now, of course, there are basic concepts that will apply to all stones. Too much of a particular building block of any stone versus low urine volume will, of course, play a role. So, for example, if you have lots of calcium in the urine, that's likely to promote calcium stones. And if you're dehydrated with a low urine volume, that'll put you at risk of stones across the board. But helpfully, when it comes to urine pH, all three stones behave very differently. I want you to draw this diagram with me. We've got our pH line here, we have our three types of stones, and we're going to place these stones on this pH line according to which pH gives the highest risk of that particular stone type. So let's label this diagram now. The stone that is most likely to form in acidic urine is uric acid. Actually, uric acid is very soluble at normal urine pH, and the soluble form of uric acid is known as urate. So you could have oodles of uric acid in your urine, but if the urine pH is normal, then you're pretty unlikely to form a uric acid stone. It's just so soluble. But if your urine is very acidic, it's the perfect environment for a uric acid stone to form. But wait a minute, uric acid is an acid, so why on earth would it precipitate in an acid? (laughs) Now this is a cool concept. Uric acid exists in this little equilibrium equation that you might remember from high school chemistry. The definition of an acid is a solution in which there are free hydrogen ions. And with uric acid, those hydrogen ions are free in solution together with urate, which is very soluble. On the other side of this equation is the uric acid molecule itself, which is not free in solution and is pretty insoluble. Now, if we take this equation and we add more acid, so more hydrogen ions, we are going to shift this whole equation to the left and make more insoluble uric acid. So, This now makes a lot of sense. In acidic urine, there are more hydrogen ions and as such, it will make more insoluble uric acid. And meanwhile, in this acidic urine, calcium and oxalate and phosphate remain very happily dissolved and are unlikely to precipitate. And on the polar opposite of this pH line, in alkaline urine, there is one particular stone that is likely to appear and that's calcium phosphate. So urine pH in the alkaline territory, sort of pH 7 or so, that's going to be quite risky for calcium phosphate stone formers. As for calcium oxalate, this can form at completely normal urine pH. So using this knowledge, we can see that the only true reason to alkalinize the urine and move the urine pH upwards is to prevent the formation of uric acid stones in people who are vulnerable to this. A common approach to alkalinizing the urine is to prescribe potassium citrate. 
This can be expensive and is associated with gastrointestinal side effects too. And so other approaches might be used instead, such as sodium bicarbonate or sodium citrate, which can be found in the form of ural sachets. The problem here is with sodium. Aside from the usual issues that come from high sodium ingestion, like high blood pressure or fluid retention, when it comes to stones, the more sodium you have in your urine, the more calcium you'll have in your urine. So this can promote calcium stones in people who are vulnerable to this. So if you're using something sodium-esque to alkalinize the urine, you have to be aware of that potential side effect. But what you'll notice in practice is that whilst there's only one true reason to alkalinize someone's urine, and that's to prevent uric acid stones, people with calcium stones appear to be treated with potassium citrate fairly frequently. So what's that all about? This is all about citrate. Citrate is multifaceted. Aside from its effect on urine pH, citrate binds to calcium, preventing it from binding to other things like oxalate or phosphate. So if someone is a calcium stone former and they have low urine citrate, we'll aim to increase the amount of citrate in their urine so that there's plenty of citrate to bind to the calcium and prevent calcium stones. So the goal here is not to change the urine pH, the goal is to bind calcium. Again, prescribing potassium citrate can achieve this, sometimes plain old lemon juice can do the same thing. We can monitor the impact of our treatment by measuring the citrate in the urine, so we typically do this in a 24 hour sample. And when we're dabbling with changing this urine citrate concentration, we must also pay attention to the urine pH so as to avoid pushing the pH too high and promoting calcium phosphate stones. So it's a tricky balance, but the key thing to remember is that the only time you truly alkalinize the urine is to prevent uric acid stones. But in calcium stone formers, citrate can be used not to change the pH, but instead to bind calcium and prevent stone formation. So that was urinary alkalinization for kidney stones demystified for the win. Thank you so much for joining me. Please share this video with study buddies who need it. And I hope to see you again soon for some more high yield learning. Bye.